You're gonna be like, what? Hey you guys, welcome back to another episode of <laughs> Shit, I'm 30, the show where our sound engineer be fucking up sometimes. <laughs> That's me, your other host, Carla slash fucking up sound engineer. <laughs> Listen, we're a little lit. We just left this wine tasting event. Girl, it was so good. It was so good. You know how I know that I'm feeling it? Because the tip of my nose, it's a little numb. Oh, really? That never happens to oh, you? Oh, is that your indicator of yes. drunkness? Yes. Once really? I know the tip of my nose is numb, it's about to be a good motherfucking show. I know I'm drunk because I get like three times louder. I It'd know. like a normal situation, <laughs> I'd be loud as fuck. Well. Kaya! Kaya! <laughs> Like, for no I'm reason right here like why are you so loud i knew you were already feeling it when every stop that we went to you were taking a piece of bread i said <laughs> yeah, i know I was, to, I was like we gotta record after this i gotta i gotta get this together everywhere we went you were like i just need a piece of bread i looked yeah. over and you're just chewing on bread like what are you doing yeah. but it was so good we went to the abc um grand opening mm-hmm. and it was wine tasting and liquor and i fell in love with the whiskey yeah it was caramel. Yeah. And it tasted like a sweet black man Ooh. with a six pack just mm, like I was licking him. <laughs> <laughs> but we got a special guest. We have building. such a special guest today. Such a fucking special guest. We're about to shoot some shits. We're going to shoot the shit today with our homeboy, Rod. Do you want to go by Rod or Shrod? Rod. Rod is fine. Rod. Rod. Oh, y'all hear that voice? Ooh, that t- but girl, back the fuck up. Listen, that voice sounds like that caramel whiskey I just exactly. had, bitch, okay? And Rod is a whole fucking snack, but guess what, y'all? He don't want us. He don't want us. Because <laughs> I'm over here looking at him like, God, dog. And I told you this, I think when we went to brunch, I'm like, damn, you don't want none of me? Yeah, you did say that. No, no not, he not me on, at all. None of it. I could back it up all day and he'd just be like, all right, girl, I'm going right. to relax. But we wanted to shoot this shit with Rod because he's a 30-something black male and he's also homosexual. So we just wanted to talk about, like, just anything and everything with him. Like, shit all of us be going through. So, Rod. Yes. Tell us about yes. you. Tell, tell us. us about yourself. Um, I am 31 years old. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh. And fine. Okay, I'm sorry. Fine. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to toot my own horn, but you already <laughs> know. But, you know. Toot, toot, toot. Toot, toot, toot. toot. And he's like doing the little shit. That could. He's pursuing his dreams and his goals. That's right. Yes. I am a hairstylist. Yes. This nigga working two jobs. Yep. A I can barely get jobs. through one. <laughs> But no, because it was a big deal when he switched jobs. We were just we just recorded an episode about starting over, mm-hmm. and you just did that last year. I sure did. So you were working at the hospital, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden he called up, talking about, "I'm going to hair school." Yep. Yeah. What? So how was that? What made you decide to do that? Um, I just knew that I no longer wanted to do the hospital or medical field because that didn't really please me. Um, I would look at all these bad bitches like, yo. <laughs> her hair is fucking i look at you carla i look at dex like y'all are lit i want to play in y'all hair all day i want to play in y'all makeup <laughs> no keep in mind he's bald right right exactly. bald so i have no hair to play with on my, myself so yeah i think that's so cool though so i ha- i want to start off with like a couple of personal questions that like i've always wondered right but i don't have like a super close like gay friend so and i'm telling you let me know if anything i ask is offensive or stupid but like okay. when did you know that you were gay i kind of knew i was gay when uh, at an early age i didn't know what to i didn't know how to define it what's early i want to say around mm, 10 okay 10 or 11 that. yeah I, I think that's when i started thinking that guys were cute so i could i could totally understand that mm-hmm. so you didn't know what it was at first i didn't know what it was at first i just knew i was you know different than you know my counterparts and stuff like that so yeah yeah okay so then you stayed you just kept it inside i kept it inside yeah because my thing one of my first questions to you is when did you di- when did you know and when did you come out i fully knew when i was in high school that okay i was gay and i identified as gay but not out the beginning or end of high school um the end the end of high school because i knew a little more about myself then and Mm -hmm. there was you know um social media was kind of popping myspace and stuff like that was Mm -hmm. popping so i know right Top five, top ten. Oh, okay, girl, that top five. <laughs> that top five. You can get in that trouble was, oh, yeah, for not having your, like your significant other or your best friend on the best, your best friend. friend man. Best friend had to be on there. 
tell so, you. So, but you weren't ever dating girls. I dated two girls, actually. What I did dated, dating consist of? Dating consisted of holding hands, you know, yeah, like the little puppy love, yeah. you know, yeah. holding hands, um, walking each other to the bus, picking mm-hmm. each other up from the bus. Oh, yeah. I want to do You know, going nowadays. to prom, going to, you know, Oh, so you went to prom with a girl? Like yeah. Okay. Did you yeah. go to prom, Dex? I did go to prom. I was on prom court, bitch. Were you? I was. I ain't playing, but I was definitely <laughs> on the fucking court, bitch. Yes. Yeah, my date Damn. run, my date one prom king, and I was so mad he had to dance with that girl. I'm like, keep it fucking short, right? <laughs> you better cut it short. <laughs> exactly. Then I can prom. Yeah, I went to prom. I was pregnant. Oh, really? Yes, bitch. I did not know that. Girl, I had Ayana two, not even two weeks after graduation. Oh wow. Okay, I'm sorry. So back to Rod. Sorry. So you realized late in high school, and how did that come out, or how did that happen? Um, I just never, I never really acted on it. I just knew that I didn't have. A sexual attraction for Women. girls. Okay. Yeah. I just knew that I didn't. So, so they were like your homegirl? Yeah. More so my homegirl. I know one girl broke, broke up with me because she was like, I, I'm boring as fuck. Like, I don't do nothing. <laughs> she, like, like, nigga, I'm she was to like, like <laughs> right. She was like, so when are we going to go to the next stage? Because all you want to do is just kiss and just, you know, hold my hand and, and do this. Like, <laughs> I'm telling you holding this damn hand, okay? Right. My hand's <laughs> clammy at this point in time. And you're like, oh, girl, I just like the way your weave is. <laughs> like, the way you got that weave laid. Like... <laughs> I just wanted to hang with you. I mean, it's sickening, but, you know. <laughs> That's crazy. So when did you actually say, I'm ready and I want to... Because you had to try it first, right? Yeah. So when did you try it? I was sad. I didn't try it until I was an, an adult. What's an adult? Because you're an adult at 18, honey. Are you, though? No. no. Uh, in your head, well, you're still your very head, immature. You are, so um, how old were you? when? You, so when's your first sexual encounter? Because it, it, was, it was when I was 22. Wait, so... Oh, what? wow. You so were you like, were a virgin till 22? Mm, till 22. You yeah, didn't get your... Man. No, I mean, because I was, I was very scared. Yeah. And nervous. And, mm-hmm. you know, I lived in a very rural, small town. Everybody oh, knew each other and stuff yeah. like that. Up so. north, right? No. Um, Wait, were you down dying? south. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. And um, everybody knew each other, so I was just like, nah, I can't. I can't do that. No? No. So you were scared. So you waited till 22? Oh, Yeah. And who was it? <laughs> Tell us what happened. Some guy in Miami. It was a guy in Miami. Was it a random guy? It wasn't a random guy, but we, we were talking online. That's when, like, well, you, you guys probably don't know. But BGC Live was lit. What is BGC? It's, like a, it's, it's a black gay chat. That's online. Black gay chat. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys know about Black Planet, right? Yes, I yeah, Black Planet. Because yeah. Black Planet was popping uh-huh. back then, too. Yeah. <laughs> I was on Black Planet before I was on BGC. <laughs> But wait, in Black Planet, could you search for men? Men could search for men? You, well, when it first started out, you couldn't search for men. It was just heterosexual. Men and women. Okay. Right. And then they veered off into homosexuals and, like, you know, stuff mm-hmm. like that. But BGC was the equivalent to Black Planet. So your first try was with someone from, just from online? Yeah. I mean, we were talking for, like, a month. And okay. then um, we kind of became serious. And then... Yeah, we hit it. It took off. off from there. It took off from there. How did it feel? It, so cute. <sighs> it, it felt, felt right. It felt right, but then again, it was like, I don't know. I still don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> I don't think any of us did. I don't know what the hell I was doing. Girl, yeah. man. I was so lost. I had no clue. Okay, so we wanted to, I, I guess I wanted to talk about this just because, in I guess in my culture, I guess in the Hispanic culture, gay is just. I think it's the Caribbean. It's just so wrong. Mm-hmm. Oh. They shame it. Like I believe Jamaicans are the same way. Oh yeah, Jamaica. it's like don't talk mm-hmm. about it. In Puerto Rico, my sister had a friend. He's in his forties, and his family still doesn't know. Oh, and that to me is crazy. That you're living in this closet in this fake life for so many years, your entire life, and it's yeah. like, dude, you're not yourself. I'll be damned if I can't be myself. You yep. know what I mean? That's so hard. So what let what made you come out? Because you're you're out. You've been in a relationship. Like what made you say, I'm ready to say this is who I am? Like I'm just ready to just live my life and, you know, fuck anybody else that has any opinion about my life. Mm-hmm. Um Well, I was paying my own bills. Hey. <laughs> that would help. Oh, that power, that power. I mean, that that power. power. <laughs> <laughs> paying my own bills. You know, I was taking care of me and I, I it, it took me a while to find myself. 
I had to find myself and 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 be comfortable with who I was mm -hmm. once I found once I truly identified as a gay male. Mm -hmm. Um and then after that, you know, I was living my life for so long um through everyone else's eyes mm -hmm. and I neglected myself and that didn't feel good. Right. Damn. Mm -hmm. To see, you know, straight couples holding hands and having that public affection and stuff like that. That really bothered me because I couldn't do that. Right. Oh. So I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to live the best life I can. I'm going to own my truth and I'm going to, you know, stick to it. So, so did you actually like make an announcement to your family or did you just start living that life and they kind of figured it out? Um, well, they already kind of knew. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, okay, they're like, duh, bitch. <laughs> I feel like all the families always know. Right. And it's that one particular person that kind of knows in your family, whether it's your mom or your grandma. It's always like a female intuition, kind of. You oh, know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they throw little hints out there to get you to know, <laughs> like, it's okay, baby. You can tell me if you want to. You know, yeah. I already know <laughs> without saying it. But, um, yeah, I think, I think they already knew. They just wanted me to come out and tell me. Oh. They wanted me to come out and tell them yeah. so and how did that happen um that to me would be so scary that was it was the hardest thing for me to tell like my family i would be shitting bricks it took a while for me to tell my family i didn't tell my family until i was like 26 oh wow oh, so that wasn't even that long ago. it wasn't that long ago right, right. so you were, you were you were living how lying secretive the thing about it is um some families i know well i know mine in particular they they if they know stuff they don't want to like invade your you know mm -hmm. privacy my, or something my like that too. They'll let yeah you tell them. they'll let you tell them whenever you're ready mm -hmm. you'll come and tell me right. oh my family's not like that <laughs> they all gonna talk about it. it's gonna get back to you they all oh, talk no. about it. they just gonna, somebody's gonna come and be like um we know what's up we all talking about it i mm -hmm. have a, a family member that actually <laughs> That actually brought um, his girlfriend to, I think it was Thanksgiving, but his girlfriend was obviously a man dressed as a girl. And we, I mean, you didn't tell you nothing about it. Come down, sit down. What you, you want some? Get out. Yeah, no. And he had been in jail for a very long time. He went to jail when he was like, I think he was 15, 16. Oh, wow. And it was like he wow. had only been out for probably like less than, than two years and the next family gathering. But like my family, they don't, they don't like, it's just like whatever. But you know like, what? You know what I mean? I feel like that's amazing yeah. to just say, come on, sit down. It is what it is. Yeah. Nobody, no judgment. No nah, judgment. Nah, nah, no so judgment. Nah, then, and I ain't going to lie. We like, that's a man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like we like, no, B. <laughs> but like we don't care you know yeah. what I mean like whatever it makes you happy like I have had, had family members who've been like never we're gonna throw our jokes like, you know, but like, stuff like that but like we don't we don't we don't really judge the jokes aren't really we, we to hurt you. you if you bring your bum ass boyfriend heterosexual boyfriend like right. you know, like that's how my family is like <laughs> yeah dang so okay let's just fast forward real quick so we can get to the rest of the question how did you come out what did you say who did you come out to well, I came out to my mom first, and then I came out to um, my grandma. Okay. Yeah, I came out to my mom, my grandma. I came out to my cousin, my close cousin. So you did it all one by one? I did, yeah. I had to, yeah. Oh. And See, then, I feel like I would do like a family announcement. Listen, motherfuckers, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> no, because I, 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 I mean, growing up. I don't know how it is in other communities, but I know growing up in the black community, um, back when I grew up in the early 90s and stuff like that, gay was so shunned, shunned mm -hmm. upon yeah. and it was ostracized. They would like ostracize you and stuff like that. So, And I would hear little things coming from my family members, you know, saying, oh, if my son was gay, I'd oh, take him in the backyard yeah. and kill him and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So That's the word. I, that always, you know, played in my head mm -hmm. as I grew up and I never really wanted to come out because, because of that reason. And I so. feel like people don't, don't realize that. I, me hearing so much of negative things about the gay community... It didn't turn me towards being against it, but my cousin, who I'm super close with, is gay. And I always felt like, I love her. I'm so close to her. Why are we treating her this way? Mm -hmm. She's, there's nothing different to her. What If it's none of my business when there's a heterosexual, like a cousin, screwing mm -hmm. her man, what is it my business if my cousin's screwing a woman? Mm -hmm. 
Like, it's none of our business. We don't talk about when they're screwing a, a penis. What does it matter? She's doing a vagina. That's what gets me because I don't understand how is it any of anybody else's business what that person do in the bedroom. Yeah. Like, I don't understand. I, I, I mean, I don't care who you suck, fuck, <laughs> or anything like that. You know, It's none of our business. It's, it's nobody's business. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Anyways, so we were, there's been so many things out right now of discrimination. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, and that boils my blood. Drives me crazy how bad it's been. We, we were just talking about the lady calling for the barbecue. Yeah. Did you see that? Yes, the memes are hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. So funny. Then there was another guy recently. He was a black contractor. He was going in the house. I just seen you that. You saw that one? He, Today. Was, he went to his house. He bought the house as a contractor. And the lady across the street called the police on him because he was taking down the boarding. The police guy was, hey, shout out to him. He can come to the barbecue. Yes. <laughs> there was a, he can come to the barbecue. He we was like, if together. she messes with you again, cause we'll take her to jail. Oh, wow. Yes. Mm-hmm. The police was like, and he was a white man too. And he was going back and forth with her. Yes, he was. Oh, wow. The police with the white lady, yes. No, yeah. he was playing no games. Um, I think I saw it yesterday, but anyway, it's recent. Um, I would say people of color right now are going through some serious shit, mm-hmm. but now it's being seen. I think it's just as bad as it's, as it probably happened before when we weren't around, mm-hmm. but now it's being broadcasted through social media. How is that amplified with you being not only black, now you're also a man, mm-hmm. and now you're also gay? Mm-hmm. That's like three things right there all in one that mm-hmm. you can't separate from. Yep. I was just listening to Jesse Smollett from Empire mm-hmm. and he was saying he's a black he's a gay man but he leads with his blackness cuz that's the one thing that he can't separate from. Yeah. I, I wish I would have gotten a clip from that one because he's like I the first thing he's like I don't want to say that black is more important than my gay rights but that when gays were able to get married, he was saying now gay white men are truly free mm-hmm. because they're a hundred percent free now. You can do whatever you want. He's like, I'm a gay black man. So although now I can get married, I'm still black yep. and I can't get rid of that. That's right. So how do you, have you been through things? Have you like bold discrimination things, maybe at work with friends or just out just because you're a gay black man, whether you're with your boyfriend? Um, I would say, Definitely, um, you get the stares if you, you know, do public affection and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had an incident where I was working at a previous job and they didn't know my sexual orientation. They didn't know my sexual preference or anything. By like looking that. at you, no one will know. No one will know unless I tell you. Um, so they was curious um, and they would do stuff just to see what what i would say really yeah so one day my friends which i guess they thought was flaming which the term flaming means like overtly gay right or or feminine or whatever flamboyant um they came up to my job and my supervisor wasn't there she was not there at the time and who came your friends my friends my friends came they they picked me up because my car broke down okay and so they pick me up, la da la, whatever. Next day, I hear her telling telling a joke about how flaming guys came up to the job looking for me. Mm. Now this lasted for a month. Wow. The joke. Mm-hmm. Um, that thirty days. Mm-hmm. Thirty one. Yeah. How did you react? You didn't. Did you? I didn't. I didn't react. At, at first, I didn't. I didn't react to it because I I knew it would blow over, and I was just like, whatever. And then um, the year after that, it came back up. Oh. I was like, are you are you shitting me? Like, are you really shitting they me? They still don't know at this time. No, her brother brought it up, and then I was just like, okay, I have to go to HR because this is really harassment at right. this point. Yeah. And it's just like, what are you trying to get uh, a response out of me? Do you want me to say something? And I know once I say something, I'm going to be black angry, man. And do you so, want me to fuck you up? I mean. And you got them guns. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the ones with bullets. <laughs> Big ass, sexy ass arms. So yeah, I went to HR and handled it. And, and they took care of it? Yeah, they took care of it. And that's fucking amazing that they take care of it. Because I feel like nowadays, sometimes HR doesn't do anything. No. There's some companies that you go to HR and it's just like, yeah, we'll write it down. <laughs> and we'll file it in the cabinet. Throw that shit away. Right. They right. don't do anything they about it. They don't do it. anything. That's what it's that. I was gonna ask about the workplace. So you actually felt. Oh yeah, the workplace. In the workplace. Yep. 
I, I think I have to get this out there. I think because um, my mannerisms don't um, add up to, I guess, my gayness, as some people will say. Mm-hmm. Because when heterosexuals or heteros, when they when they look at or even think of a gay person, they think of flamboyant, they think of feminist, mm-hmm. feminist, right. um, feminism and stuff like that. Um, they don't look at me as being gay, so they kind of accept me until they find out that, oh, he gay. Yeah. So, just by they, looking at me... Yeah. By looking at you, I'm like... The same thing happens with, with me with white people, with, mm-hmm. like, being black. It's like, okay, um, you know, what is she, right? And then it's like, okay, she's black, but it's like, there's a different level of acceptance because she's black, but she's not black, black. But then when right. they find out, like, no, like, she's black, like, black, black, it's like, oh, okay, let me back mm-hmm. up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I can see that happening because... Yeah. The first thing that people, when they see you, they're not thinking, one, you're black, two, where you come from, three, right. how you grew up. Like, they, they won't see any of that. They'll have a... Yeah, or they, or even if they do see black, it's like, but she's obviously not all black, so it's, like, more accepting. Or it's like, yeah. oh, she's not as threatening because she's not, like, full black. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they only know you can fight Dex. Girl, no, I can't. We ain't gonna put that line down. <laughs> can't throw them hands, Dex. <laughs> so, you're saying... You're gay. Does mm-hmm. that mean, and you didn't know what this meant, Dex, that you have a, you're a gold star gay man? I am a member. Yeah. He's a member of the gold star team. Yeah, I never heard that term before. Is there gold star heterosexuals? Um, I, I think. Is? <laughs> you know, I think it? I lost that. I kissed the girl. I kissed the girl. I'm too drunk. Okay, to well, let's like explain there. what that means, though. Yes, right. what is gold star? I will let you explain that. You know it very well, don't you? I don't know why I know it so well. Oh, <laughs> I know it because of my cousin. So basically, you've never kissed. Mm-hmm. You've never sexually touched. And you've never had any sexual encounter with a woman. I've never done any of those things. You held her hand until it was clammy as fuck. And right. she was over you and broke up with your ass. Right. That girl was over your ass touching her hand. <laughs> And she, she was like, you are boring as fuck, nigga. Like, <laughs> she was, she's like, you know what? I'm done with your ass. Bye. I broke right. up with you. And I'm, broke up with me. I'm curious, do like, in, in gay relationships, do you think y'all have like the same problems or less problems than we have in like heterosexual? You would think we would have less problems, I right? would think so. I would assume that, right? You share clothes. Right. You're, you're a guy. Like, you know how guys feel. Like, we kind of get best in the most worlds, don't we? Like, but I right. mean, not really because i mean you're still dealing with emotions yeah and even though you know society likes to play off of men should be men you know they should never cry you know we should never be down or nothing like that but at the end of the day most men's are they're more emotional than women they just go about it a different way (laughs) oh we know oh we know we know but we i think we be thinking like it's like that with us because we don't necessarily understand them and we communicate differently as men and women oh that's true but it's like it's the same. Yeah. I so you guys are emotional like, all the time? Not all the time, but oh. we can't. I mean, but, we can't get emotional. But just as a, I think if, it just stems really back to communication. Yeah. That's all it is. Can you imagine two emotional ass niggas? Oh, like, no, you would be a horrible <laughs> I, I, Like, if you're my girlfriend, oh my gosh. Girl, we I would be even. terrible. the worst girlfriend ever. You would know. I would not <laughs> be the You would be the I'm worst like, girlfriend. You're so mean. And you're so distant. <laughs> Talk to me, goddammit. What the fuck? <laughs> To me, you to me you need a long time. And no, it would be exactly I like that. I not want to deal with a girl. Oh, oh my god, I can't. Even, <laughs> the thought of it. And I told you before. I'm like sometimes I'm like maybe I will and be like not in a relationship. But I don't. I don't think I. I, I can't look directly at a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Can you? Like, I mean, what about glance? Like, no, uh-uh. Uh-uh. you make weird, like, art, like your eye starts moving. Like when I went to like a real, real strip club and they were out there, this girl like busted open in front of me. I was like, oh my god, just wide open, yeah. uterus out. I was like, I don't see how guys are turned on by this. And you like, I don't, I don't understand it either. Uh, so wait, do you like strip clubs? Strip clubs is lit. I love, I love strip, strip clubs. clubs. I like strip clubs too. You see? Just don't, yeah. just don't bust it over in front of me. Just yes. like, dance sexy over there. Yes, you could dance for the guy I'm with. <laughs> yeah, if, like, yeah. I, I don't mind you dancing for yeah, the guy I'm with or the guys around me. Just not on me. I don't want to 
No. But the thing about it is, I feel like the girls always feel like coming up to you and dancing on you, so the guys will like tip them or be. Yeah. Just mm. don't do it. Yeah, I this girl had posted like nothing is less genuine than a stripper's compliment to another girl. <laughs> Because they know that, like, you the one with, like, we, nine times out of ten, if I go to a strip club with a guy, he gives me the stack. Right. So she come up here being nice to me because she see I got the stack. Right. right. Yeah. yeah, no, I don't like it when they come. Just don't, don't dance on me. Dance on him. Yeah. And then let me just watch. And I just, like, because most of the time I'm just watching and seeing, damn, I wish I had her ass. Yeah. Or how she did that move. I yeah. want to do that move tonight. Exactly, yeah. That's but you don't like them dancing on you? No. I'd rather, like, look at them. Yes, I want to look at You can dance on me right, I right here. I do grab their booties. Mm-hmm. I have a thing for soft butts. Oh, okay. I do. I like to touch the soft booties. Do you? I do. Cause I think it's because I want that, so that's why I'm so, like, <laughs> like fascinated by it. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to touch them. No. I, I touch their butts. I've touched them, but I feel really uncomfortable. <laughs> really? I'm very... I do one of those, like... No, <laughs> like throw the dollar and just like act it, oh and pretend I like I accidentally guys, touched like, it. Like throw the money aggressively at them. Oh, like, they do. Yeah. yeah, like why you gotta smack them with it? Like, I mean, well, I feel like nice. there's. I mean, when you're in a strip club, I mean, there's no rules so. though. So yeah. what do you go to the strip club for? I mean, just for the, the environment, the, mu- the, the music be lit. <laughs> And then it depends on what strip club you go to because yeah. the food be bomb too, like the wings and stuff too. Cardi B said don't eat the chicken wings at the strip <laughs> I mean, club. I think it depends on the strip club. It really depends on the strip club. I heard yeah. Tootsie's got the best in Miami. I've never been there. I've never been there. I've been either. once. It's, hu- it's like a huge warehouse of just bitches. Yeah. Everywhere. Do they yeah. climb all the way up to the pole and then I don't know. Down? They was walking. They was cute. But I want to go to 11, which I think it's like opens all night long. And I've heard they have the baddest. Let's take a trip 11 to Miami. 11 has strippers? I didn't think 11 was a strip club. That's yes. a 24-hour club. Yes. We're going there in Let's August. Let's go. In August? Mm-hmm. That's a long ways away. Why do we got to wait till August? Well, there's a trip that we're going on in August. I mean, we can go before because I love Miami. We're going on a trip in August? Yes, we're going to somebody's burger rip party. Oh, I'm going. I forgot. I forgot. My bad. It's the liquor. It's the liquor. It's the wine. It's the wine. We are going. Okay, so we'll go in August for sure. Okay, cool. Okay, back to Rod. Back to Rod. So, um, let's switch gears real quick. Now we're grown. We -hmm. can do whatever the fuck we want. Mm -hmm. We can fuck who we want, when we want, how we want. Mm -hmm. Online dating. Online dating. Have you done it? Yeah, I've done it before. <laughs> yeah. Did you what meet that? your boo on your? I did. Boo? You I did. Him you met him online. You met your yeah. Boo online. Mm-hmm. So he's in a semi relationship. Kinda. He's in a typical heterosexual relationship. Where you be <laughs> on again, off again. <laughs> what you mean about that bullshit? <laughs> there is nothing about him and his relationship that is different from mine. Exactly. Absolutely nothing. Drama of- filled. All yeah, the time. He's in a typical mm-hmm. heterosexual relationship. You love and hate just as hard as I do. Yep. So there's nothing different. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what what app did you meet him on? I met him off of... Well, we met prior to even going online and be, being on apps. But oh, I was in a relationship. Well, I mean, we met up, but not online. We, um, we knew of each other, but we met up online. There you go. Uh, you came across him. Came online across him after online met, after we met had him previously. Right. Okay. But I was in a relationship at the time, and he. Did you yeah. cheat on your? Ex? No, I did, did not. We can, we can, I'm gonna ask you again when we start recording. <laughs> <laughs> you so messy. <laughs> you so stupid. Messy. No, okay, so I did not. I, I I still don't get how that happened. So they met previously, didn't like exchange information or anything like that. Yeah, because we were we were. F- we have mutual friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, because the gay community is so small. Right. Um, so. Is it really, though? I feel like It I really always... is. I, sw- I promise you it is. I feel it like really I hear is. That all I the think time. the gay black community is smaller. Very smaller. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because smaller. I hear that all the time. And I feel like we say, gosh, Orlando's so small. Yeah. Everybody's fuck everybody. So imagine being gay. And black in Orlando. Yes. I guess it is. Because there's so. a bunch of gay gay white men in Orlando. We just saw like Which is five at this tasting. Too. They older too. Yes. And yeah. they don't feature us, to be honest. No? Mm-mm. So it's different? It's different? It's different. Oh. oh. They At least with some of my experience and then um, some I people that I converse with oh. that are I was a baby out here, sugar daddy. So where did you and afterwards where did you no. meet him on? It depends, I guess. Yes. Huh? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you real interested in the sugar daddy. I'm just like, they all like that and they ain't giving up no money. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> then what 
what you working with them for? Exactly. Okay, none of that. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot stand y'all and y'all sugar daddies. <laughs> I'm just like, just like you're old, like seriously. Don't no, do I no, they are out here. They are out but there. But they don't though. check for like black. They hair. do, but I think it's more. I think it's more so fetish fetishizing. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. The being with a black man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like white people love being with colored folks. Um, Behind closed doors, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like a thing for them. Like they don't they, check yeah. for me. They don't check for me. Um, I think they want like real like. Like yeah. black girl, black yeah. girls, you know what You're I mean? close to their it's cousins. Like, bitch, you, you look like Susan. <laughs> you look like their cousin after yeah, she's like exactly. tanned a few times. <laughs> and you, like, like, Jessica. <laughs> Where's Keisha? <laughs> we was looking for a Laquita. Right. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I feel like white people really do fantasize about being with like black people, mm -hmm. like folks of like. You ever been with a white guy? I've never been a white, with a white guy. Never? Not even mm -hmm. kissed? Mm -mm. Me either. Mm -hmm. Have you the next? But you had to think we, about it. We interviewing Rod. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what we going. We that's what we going to do? That's what we going to do? That's what we going to do next? <laughs> You've been with a white guy? I had a one-time situation. How I, like, was it? A, a, I dated a white guy. It was like, he was so nice and I thought I liked him because like, we like, we were around each other a lot and he was really cool and I thought I liked him. But then when I tried to like date him, like go out on dates with him, it was just like the sexual attraction never came. You know what I mean? He was mm. always just so nice. And not that I don't like nice guys. It's just. I told you I had that I never, with the one I never guy. Liked him. I never liked him on that level. Oh. Yeah, there was this one guy. He was perfect on paper. I mean, corporate, tall, dark. Mm very handsome mm -hmm. so nice one of the best for me but i was just like i don't like you like yeah. that and one of the main things that like i'm attracted to is like really dark skin you know yes. what i mean mm -hmm. so it's like you don't got that dark skin it don't look like a snickers bar <laughs> <laughs> you know? like open it up where's the nuts yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like i love dark skin so it's like yeah like, Okay, wait. <laughs> Let's go back. So, what dating apps have you used? I've used Jack. I've used Grinder. Grinder. That just sounds so like my yeah, booty like, clenches. Like, why both of the names gotta sound so sexual? I feel like like my ass just hurts thinking you know about Grinder. Somebody told me a gay guy once told me he said it's actually harder if you're a gay man and you want to be like in relationships and stuff because most men just follow their like sexual like just rawness right and so most of them just jumping from one to the next and they're like on these apps and they just fucking so like if you really want to be in a relationship it's like hard um because most men get in a relationship because women want women kind of like make them be in relationships ooh. and you don't have that when it's when it when you're both men i don't know i i mean i i I, I don't know if I can agree with his experience, but I know my experience was a little different. Yeah. Um, I've always been in relationships. Mm -hmm. I've I I don't like being a bachelor. I don't like yeah. being single. <laughs> that's not my that's not my cup of tea. Yeah. Me but, either. Um, so you're a serial not, dater? Yes. Me too. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Like I it's nothing like being with some being committed to someone and actually coming home, like, you know, Aww. watching a movie, oh, being so all in. Yeah, it's nothing like that. Look at his smile. So he thinking about right. me right now too. He's like, they're a motherfucker that right. <laughs> oh, stupid ass nigga. I don't like him, but I'm finna go home to him tonight. <laughs> oh, like for like a millisecond you made me miss that. Now I'm about to fucking gag. <laughs> <laughs> But I do, I do agree somewhat what what he's saying because you have to think though we're dealing with men, so, yeah. You know mm -hmm. our home out the fucking window, really? <laughs> and sometimes you know they can't control them. So, but I don't think they even stop by. I mean, I don't even think they even try. No, I don't think so either. Yeah. So you were saying grinder, jacked. <sighs> How does this work? Because I know of some people, there was a guy that was on one of these apps and basically he didn't want anyone to know who he was. I think it was a, a TV show or uh, I'd be reading weird shit. And it was like whoever met him had to have, be blindfolded. What? Whenever they came in. Uh -huh, I'm scared. He gonna kind of kill me, bitch. 
No, I don't think anybody died. Well, he didn't die. <laughs> what? Yeah, the guy didn't die. He would the the guy he met. He wanted him to walk in and be blindfolded, and then they would do what they do, and that was it. What? Have what? How do? Like okay, that? so I have so many questions. Hell no. Hell no. Wait, you can have sex with somebody you don't even you don't even know how like? they what they look like. Right? Some people do that. No. Yes, it have. I also oh, you use your imagination. It Correct. Ain't, it ain't safe out here for that. <laughs> no, and that Girl, when I, I need to see your paperwork, I thought the same thing <laughs> when I was reading it. Carfax, oh. Yes, <laughs> I need to see your motherfucking paperwork. No, you know what? We're gonna bring somebody on who's like really into online dating and just I want a nympho, honestly. Listen, are you for real? Like, is this like a real thing? Like, people yes, are- I've never heard never of that heard before that. in my That's life. That's crazy. That's I actually very dangerous. On top of, I the, think so too. On yeah. top of the fact that I've read about it, I heard of, i know of someone who's done it what yes we'll talk about it that's I guess, dangerous okay. so I guess, are they at least oh, like yeah. wrapping things up yeah they wrap it up yeah i'm, I'm pretty sure they they're being safe but at the yeah, same time like i don't feel for bumps and stuff i feel like in in your community is it like ours where it's very safe i feel like heterosexuals like, aren't safe yeah what you talking about our community very safe i it fucked up not safe. I we are like, not safe yeah, yeah safe i feel hill. like n- now that you say that no I feel like our community is a little more, I think because we have to be though. Oh yeah. Cause of the stigma out there. Yeah. It's a yeah. stigma that I feel like it's bullshit nowadays. We all have shit. Like I feel like heterosexuals, gays, um, heterosexuals, homosexuals, transgender. We, it's everywhere nowadays. I don't, I don't feel like don't, one can. You don't have to be no, any type of way. You sure don't. Anything. Right. Yep. How many people are out here with all kinds of STDs mm-hmm. and it doesn't matter if you're yeah. homosexual or heterosexual. It really doesn't. Yeah, that's why I can't be having sex with people with a blindfold. I ain't never met you before. <laughs> I need to see your paperwork. <laughs> some people, but some people have those fantasies. So I, you, I think you can have those fantasies very safe. You can, you know, pretend. I need the paperwork directly from the doctor's office. So when I was you single, when you um, were single, because you're not single now, right? I'm not. I'm not single, but ahead, when I was ahead. single, um, I was talking to this this DL guy, mm-hmm. and that's a whole nother world. Like that's a whole I, I don't have time for that, that's but that's a, a whole nother like realm. Yeah, like, is there a lot of them? There, yeah. Listen, yeah. all I know is There's that I can see them. how that can make the relationship that much harder. Yeah, if you actually are in a relationship. I mean, some of them want to be in a relationship. Yeah, and With still who? be DL. And still be DL. Oh, for sure. You know sure. how frustrating that would be? Oh, my gosh. So, how did you deal with that? How was that? That was in a relationship. Yeah. First and foremost, because I, I don't have time for that. I, I'm past that in my life. But, yeah. um, so, we were getting ready to do what we do, whatever. Mm-hmm. And, and I was like, okay, so, you know, te- asking him, what's your status? You know, like... Are you clean? Are you? Do you have any STDs? Like, who's the last person? You, like, I go through all of that stuff. Yeah. Like, and so he was just like, "Oh, you don't have to worry about nothing, you know, because I'm, I'm straight. Like, I don't, I don't use condoms." And I was like, "Wait, wait what? what? Wait, what? <laughs> I was what like, wait, what? What? Wait, I became foreign, foreign a little bit because I don't understand what. Right. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And he was like, "Yeah, I, I, I'm straight. Like, I, I, I can't catch anything if um." With a woman? With a guy. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. he th- they think you can only get it if you're with a woman. Yeah, misinformed and oh, lack of information. Oh, because he thinks he can't get it from back there. Yeah. Is that oh. a tool Is that a Wow, light bulb. He thought the ass don't got nothing. So he, so he, so a lot. I think a lot of um, DL guys or whatever. I think they, they, they are under this perception of um, if I put on a condom or if someone straps me, straps a condom on me or whatever, then that's a, a mission of guilt to or saying say, that you have something, saying that I have some, or saying that I'm gay when I'm not. Oh, so oh. they're in denial. So you sense. don't put a condom on, and if you don't put it on, that means just I'm not really gay. I'm, I'm just not trying really to gay. Shit I'm out. just trying to shit out, right? Exactly. Okay, nigga. Yeah. They okay. need to stop playing. They need to stop playing. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I've never heard nothing like this. Me before. either. Yeah. Yep. Oh my. That's gosh. insane. I said nah. I'm good. Like no goodbye. 
Yeah. I have a question. Oh my gosh. What's your question? How do you like know when somebody be gay? Like you just out, right? And you see like a cute guy. Like how do you know if it's okay to holla at him? Like how do you be knowing? I have a clue. (laughs) Oh, you have a clue? I do. Okay. What's the clue? Eye contact. But you can make um, eye contact with a stri- Is there a certain kind? Is there a secret code? I feel like there's a, there's there's body language, like you said, eye contact and you look two times, bitch, you gay. You <laughs> want you want this ass. <laughs> is that really what? Is it? Is that how it works? Like I feel like it. It kind of is. I mean, because how else are you gonna find out? Right. Right. So you just look a little longer. Yeah, you and gaze, you squint. gaze a little long. Oh, might you be. Or a like handshake, because you know, back in the day, they used to say the handshake was what told it. What did you do with the handshake? I don't know. You like well, you shake, you my did hand, a little shake my handshake, hand, shake my hand, did a little handshake, and you did the little. Oh! Yeah, that's how you knew. In yeah. high school, that made you want to fuck. I guess that's what that means. <laughs> so what he just did to me, he rubbed, he shook my hand, but he took his index finger and rubbed the middle of my palm. Mm-hmm. To us, that meant we were fuck. That's what that means to them too. <laughs> <laughs> Just confirmation. Oh, wow. Wow. So nowadays, well, you're in a relationship. When you're off mm-hmm. and you just want to like see a guy and see if he's interested, what do you do? I in public. In public? I don't... You let them approach you. Do you approach? For the most part, yeah. I don't... Because I'm not like a chaser yeah. or anything like that. They got to chase all that you, ass. You're fine as hell. I see you being chosen. Right. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, you get chosen. He like, I'm the bad bitch. You right. come to me. <laughs> okay, so I want to ask a personal question. Because you're so manly. Not manly. Masculine. And just... Like we said, unless somebody knows that you're gay, there's no way of knowing. Remember, if we ask a dumb question, you can let us know. I think I know what you're going to ask, bitch. I know what you're going to ask. <laughs> if it's a dumb question, question. If it's a dumb question, you can let us know. Because I know what you're going to ask. Are you a top or a bottom? <laughs> Figure sign if I ask too much. <laughs> this, I, that was another one. I mean, I'm. I, I I used to. I didn't used to be comfortable with that question, but mm-hmm. I'm comfortable with that question. I don't. I mean, I don't really care. Okay, cool, Tony. I'm fully verse. Oh. Okay, so give us the lingo. What does that mean? Fully verse means you. You know, back door and front door. Okay. Wow. I'm only front door. I could see that. I, you know, I could see that being an exciting person to be with. Like that opens up your dating pool. Mm. It opens. You can date either one. You yeah, I mean. But what do you prefer? There you go. That's the question. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I don't have a preference. I mean, what? I, I, I like think them that's equally. why you say fully versed. Yeah, yeah, I like them equally. Really? So if I wasn't fully versed in, if I like bottoming, I would be like, and I, if I like bottoming, but I occasionally top, mm-hmm. that means I'm, um, what a flexible is bottom. <laughs> 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 um, verse bottom. Oh, okay. verse bottom. Okay. Yeah. So that means and that is there such thing as a verse top? Yes, that oh. means you prefer top, but you will. You're willing and, and to be a verse willing is to. Like and that's e- 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 equal opportunity. Yeah. Oh. You know what? Can I ask a question? This is me being in my 30s and wanting to maybe explore one day. Mm-hmm. I don't even like taking a shit. Mm-hmm. How can I be comfortable if I don't like it to come out? How am I supposed to let it come in? I mean, without screaming, crying. You never. I mean, because just like you said, you don't like taking the shit, but that's coming out. You right. don't know how it feels going in. Mm. Is it different? I feel like it'll be just as painful. You have to experience it in order to know. I don't know. I, I feel like it's uh, it's a different it's a different feeling. From pooping to yeah to getting it? yep exactly it's a definitely a different feeling. Mm. I want to learn because you know I mean because you know it's a shit coming out. Do you have to prep beforehand every single time? Really? Unless I mean, unless you know your body. Know what about it? When when it's gonna be something in there? Yeah. I be constipated, so I don't be going to the bathroom for about five days. <laughs> you probably shouldn't do it with, with all that constipation you be dealing with. It'll probably be worse. Like, don't do it, Carla. That ain't for you. That ain't your life. That ain't your life. I mean, <laughs> try, try something else. Try something else. Cause Cause all your 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 issues with that one, like, just try something else. Okay, fine. I won't try to shoot. Is it like is it incorrect 
to automatically associate being a bottom with being like the more feminine or submissive in, in the relationship yeah yeah i think that's just yes it's very in- incorrect and okay. i think that's just that's just a stereotype stereotype yeah yeah so there are some that are bottoms that are very manly and and very much like the alpha it could be a nigga that just got that that just finished lifting weights that look buck buff as hell Mm -hmm. like idris elba or like you know the rock yeah but they saying they're top and you know when the lights are off they're flipping their legs up do you think wait hold on flipping their leg oh yeah it's not like doggy style it's more intimate when you yeah they they flipping their legs up that means they're taking it Mm -hmm. instead of giving it like a vagina yeah yeah Mm. you lay on your back like a jj (laughs) wow I was told that a long time ago. Actually, you know what? You're right. I was told that too. Mm-hmm. But it's more why... intimate. You gonna look at me? <laughs> <laughs> so do you? Because well, I mean, when I'm getting down, I'm very like ah. Uh, uh. I cannot do. Do you, you say? Do you ah? Uh, or do you like yeah? Ah, uh, uh, nigga, give it to me. <laughs> Kyla, Kyla, please. I cannot do. Because I mean, I, I can't imagine Rod saying ah. Uh, but then I can't also imagine like being like intimate eye to eye, legs flipped up, and you saying I could totally see him. Being yeah, like, they're like what? Like the second one, like because his smile, <laughs> he has like a very like soft, like tender side. He is very tender. Yeah, like he's like a buff teddy bear. Like, <laughs> so do you ah uh, or do you uh? I mean, it depends on how it feels. No, I mean I I feel like I don't, I'm definitely not gonna be like. Mariah Carey. <laughs> <laughs> you would never get that out of me. <laughs> Mariah Carey then or now. Like, you would never get either one of those out of me. <laughs> okay, so you've been DMXing? Yes. Get at me, dog. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I fucking love it. So it's a manly experience all the way through. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Like I'm, you my nigga. You like we get in and down. Yeah, I think it's. I don't know. I I feel like it's a whole stereotypical thing to just think that, like somebody, like one has to be a girl, a girl or you know. Yeah, I, I hate when people say that. Who's the girl? Who's the guy? They don't ask that for us. Like I feel in my relationship, sometimes I'm a little bit. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I, I, I second that. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely be having the pants on every now and then. Yeah. I don't like dresses and I don't like skirts. The, the pants be on. I like pants. <laughs> but it's not like I'm taking over or I want to be a man. It's just, it's my personality. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not a stereotype that stereotype of, oh, a housewife and soft and they tell you what to do. No, fuck that. So why does it have to be like that in a homosexual relationship? Yeah. Right. I, that I don't like. Yeah, that's one of my things. That's... My mom asked me that, actually. Really? She was like, because when I came out to her, she was like, so am I going to see press on nails, heels? Ah. She had no idea. You're like, no, chat. So she was just completely oblivious to what the gay community was. Did you have to educate her on what it was? No, she she was a lesbian. She knew. Really? She just didn't know. Because lesbians and gays, I mean, although they are in the same community, they're not the same. So wait, how long was your mom a lesbian for? Um, because obviously you're here, right? And then I have a little brother, which is four years right. older than me. Um, I think after him, I'm pretty she sure said, she said, "Fuck these niggas." Yeah, pretty much. So, but almost all your life, mm-hmm. she was with a woman. Yep, nice for what? <laughs> wow. <laughs> that I did. I actually I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah, she was with the woman. Do you feel like you coming out made y'all closer? Yeah, in a sense, definitely. Yeah. At first, no, because she was just like asking me the whole top and bottom thing because she was a stud and she wanted okay. to know exactly if I was taking a given. I was like, Ooh. okay, mom, that's just way too much information. You wouldn't ask uh, that if I was straight. Right. Like, how did she like it from the back? From the front, like from the side, you want to ask so why you asking? She might have like, also wait. been asking that is she like she dressed like a guy kind of mm-hmm. good, like, yeah, yeah. So she yeah. might have been thinking, okay, so are you gonna kind of do like the opposite of what I'm doing, like right? Yeah. Oh right. yeah, yeah. I was like, oh. wow, I didn't know that's mm-hmm. that's pretty cool though. So that, that did make your relationship closer. Mm-hmm. It did. That's good. That's really good. Wow. I like that. Did you think it had anything to do with? Because you know, some people say, oh, if you experience. 
um, your parents or a family member or you see it, it makes you that way. No, because she, she didn't raise me. My grandma raised me. Oh, okay. okay. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't understand the whole, it, like she was a lesbian or anything like that. I didn't know that until I was actually in high school or of oh, okay. age to mm-hmm. know. The, it, it was kept separate. Yep. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, let's get into something that's kind of deeper and like not as fun. Um, Pulse here in our hometown and what we're what right now three miles away from the actual location. Mm-hmm. Did you party there? I did. You did? I did. A How lot. do you feel about everything that ha- I talk about it like right now and it, it feels heavy it, does. it was a place where i love to be where i love to hang out pulse on wednesdays oh my god fucking amazing mm-hmm. like i remember i had friends that would come here and pick me up every wednesday even if i didn't want to go out mm-hmm. and it was like banging on my door let's go and pulse on wednesdays to me was everything i think it was saturdays that was like spanish night mm-hmm. oh, that's spanish people too much it, too much makes me itchy but um, we would go and it was just i loved the vibe so when everything went down to me it hit yeah. hard. So how did I? To you, it has to be a completely different scenario. How does that feel now? What do you feel about ha- what happened and like now? Um, I still get choked up sometimes because it's just it's it's hard to actually believe that that happened at that place. Uh, a lot of people um, came there to actually be free, be themselves. You know, that was a safe haven for, you know, people that couldn't do those things outside of that place. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it it definitely hit me hard once I heard the news and um, I actually lost a friend that was in. I was going to ask you that. Did you really? Yeah. Wow. How did you find out? From the list or did you get a call first? From the list, I found out. Um me and that, me and the the guy actually was on outs a little bit, but we still kept in touch. That doesn't change, and the um, fact it really doesn't change the fact. So, um, yeah, I found out about a list, and I was just like, oh my gosh, oh, that's awful. It it was just it was devastating, mm-hmm. to say the least. And I that was really hard because I mean, a friend or someone who I was very close with that night was supposed to be there. Mm-hmm. So when I wake up to these news. My heart was just on a thousand. Like, where are you? And I remember calling back to back to back. God, I must have called about, I don't know how many times, until he picked up the phone and answers the phone and says that the guy he was with got sick and they didn't make it. Mm. So we're like, wow, what are the odds that somebody gets sick and you don't make it? You know, that we weren't there that night because I think we have a video from the week before and as any one of us could have been there yep. you truly didn't have to be gay to be at pulse you did not pulse is one of those places where you bring your friends and it was just a, such a good place and now i feel right after it happened me knowing quite a few people it was people were scared to go out again into a gay club yeah. into anything that had to do with gay so did you have like reservations about going back out oh yeah of course of course, because you you don't know if that's going to happen again. Right. And it was so fresh and so, like, it it was so sudden. Like, that came out of nowhere. Nowhere. Who would have even thought Pulse? Like, but it's, it's like that little itty bitty so house small, right there. Right, exactly. Like, how many people can it really can it really take? Who's thinking about Pulse? I would have thought if anything big like that wanted to happen, it would have happened to Parliament House. Parliament House, at least, yeah. Right. You He could have found there a million people to kill. Not thank God he didn't do that, you know. Right. But still, it's just who would have thought that this place where we see little itty bitty drag shows, we all hang out, and it's never when I went, it was because it it felt so safe. Mm -hmm. It was that safe feeling. It was. It was for something like that to happen. It really was. So where now do you hang out? Do you feel like you have to be different about where you go hang out? Um, I I do in a sense. Um, but I, I try not to let that stop me because anything can happen and anything I don't, anywhere. Right. anywhere. So I, I, I really don't try to let that hold me back, but I do keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's really no where else. I think a lot of, I think people that have those ideas that want to open up another, you know, 
safe haven or or gay club they think a pulse mm-hmm. they might think a pulse right or and the, and they don't want to I feel like that, it it's just an isolated incident with one crazy <sighs> yeah. man i they there are reports that he was dibbling dabbling and gay yep just come out not really yeah. just just come out or just just do what you got to do there's no reason to kill 50 people because you mad big mad mm-hmm. that's something to do with like shooting a mil- like, that's a lot of people is it still one of the uh, america's biggest mass shootings mm-hmm. no not anymore i think um the vegas one yes the, the vegas, vegas one was one. pretty big yeah, yeah. that I one i think was- it like just passed it not that i was happy that that happened because no one would ever be happy that something like that happened but i feel like some of those i don't know how to call these i want to call them fake christians honestly because it, it, you can't be a real christian to say what you were saying but they were like oh because they're gay or because you know they were shaming and saying that oh it was god yeah. getting rid of the gays then it happens with your caucasian folks over in vegas at a country whatever the hell it was it can happen anywhere. Yep. So this wasn't just God shooting down or whatever God you believe in shooting God the gays. But what happened with the white folks? I thought they were superior to everybody else, according to y'all. So exactly. That to me was like not. Gl- I don't know how to explain. It. Not glad that it happened, but more like, aha, you were wrong. It's not just because they were gay. It can happen to anybody. It can happen to anybody. So now we just just live your life freely. Yeah. All right, Rod. So every week we have this little segment that we call unsolicited advice where we give advice to people who didn't even ask for our fucking opinion. (laughs) (laughs) So since you're our guest for this week, we're going to let you give some unsolicited advice. It's unsolicited advice. So the floor is yours. It's all mine. Mm -hmm. Can I roll out the red carpet? Roll out the red carpet, boo. Wakanda style. (laughs) Hey, Wakanda forever. All right, Wakanda forever. (laughs) All right, so I want to give unsolicited advice to people that call black people aggressive. Mm. Yeah. Um, We're not aggressive when we voice our opinion on something. We're not aggressive when we have a problem and we're speaking out about it. We're not aggressive if we feel some kind of way and we're letting you know we're feeling some kind of way. Right. We're just passionate about it. That's all. Yeah. That is that's point blank period. Right. That's and all. when you're passionate, it's okay for your tone to change. You exactly. Raise, you're, you raise your voice. So don't be scared. Yeah. There's nothing to be scared of. White people <laughs> get just as aggressive, and when they do it, they do it with guns. So be grateful. Praise whatever God you praise. Yep. That we do with our voices, with our vocal cords. And that not AK forty seven. That was some good unsolicited advice, right? I think I was mixed with a little shit talk. It was. It, <laughs> I think we mixed it up a little bit with a little just shit. Just a little bit. Yeah. We started it a right. little bit. And if you scare next time, just go in your goddamn house because you're overprivileged as got a house with a lock in it. Go in. Shut the fuck up. Forever. Mind your business. Yes. So we're actually gonna wrap up this episode. It was amazing. Thank you so much for being here, Rod. Thank you for Thank having you so me. Much. It was so much fun. Yes. Talking. Thank you. It was a and, pleasure. Yes, and enlightening us on like just what's going on in this world right now. I feel like not only racism, but what is it called? Oh, we've been drinking too much. <laughs> what is it called when you're? I think I would really enjoy sexism? just having a conversation with like a gay man and, and just knowing and realizing and just sharing with the world that like just because you're having a conversation with a gay man doesn't mean it has to be all about their sexuality. Correct. Like there's are, nothing different. They are whole full realized people outside of their sexuality just like we are. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like a, a whole different community, but at the same time, we're the same. Exactly. We eat, she eat, shit, and sleep. The same so exact I really way. Exactly. That. Thank you for so much. <laughs> and for being open about it because some people are, aren't open or comfortable to talk about it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like nowadays, just be out, be comfortable. Some people are going to hate. People are going to hate on me for being heterosexual and having blonde hair and not being white. People are going to hate on you for not having enough freckles on your face. <laughs> and you know what I mean? They're going to hate for whatever. So thank you so much for being open about it. Thanks and for having me. Thank you. Love you. Um, we're gonna post a picture with him so you guys can see how fine he is. The how you snack, <laughs> the meal we have, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Shit, I'm Thirty Podcast on Instagram, and you can listen to us on all our platforms that we're on: iTunes, Spotify. I lied. Spotify is about to come. <laughs> So iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and Google Play. Yes. So you can follow us. Make sure to rate us on iTunes. And like I said, Spotify is coming up soon, probably in the next month or so. Bye. Bye. Bye.